Hello. The opportune moment has arrived to update the statement of ethics guiding the Society for American Archaeology because of the changes occurring since the last iteration. When the SAA adopted its statement of ethics in the 1990s, there were several developments that were just beginning. Perhaps the most consequential was the passage of the Native American Graves Protection and Repatriation Act, which had been enacted in 1990. Controversy immediately followed as both indigenous people and archaeologists struggled to determine its ambit, its meaning, and its consequences. The first test case appeared with the discovery of human remains in the Kennewick River in Washington State. Public policy had created a situation in which Native Americans suddenly had the full weight of federal law to control the direction of scientific research. Scientists lost the sponsor that had lost, long supported their ability to conduct unfettered research on the human remains they unearthed during their excavations. The NAGPRA legislation compelled the return of human remains and sacred objects that were defined by their provenance in the archaeological record. Archaeologists challenged the statute in court contending that there was no way to assign a Native American identity to human remains that were over 8,000 years old. Moreover, a unique scientific opportunity would be lost if native tribes reburied the skeleton. The controversy drew international attention and resulted in contentious speculation, including the Solutrean hypothesis about how ancient human remains were related to modern peoples. Repatriation of human remains to contemporary tribal groups became a large part of the discourse that followed as both sides provided compelling arguments for and against the NAGPRA and the public policy it supported. Ultimately, the case was settled in 2017 when the skeleton was returned to the Columbia River Basin tribes for reburial. The resolution to this case rested in no small part because of the advances made in genetic research. The Human Genome Project began its research in 1990, the same year that the NAGPRA was passed into law. Over the next decade, it sequenced and mapped all the genes in our species. Once their work was completed, they could sequence the ancient DNA extracted from human remains found during archaeological excavation. The results showed that the Kennewick man and the Anzic child found in Montana were gen genetically related to and gave rise to the indigenous people of North and South America. Today, repatriation is not the controversy it was two decades ago. It has also become an international project as museums around the world have started to examine their collections with the objective of voluntary repatriation. In October 2019, the Finnish president, during a visit to the White House, announced the intent to return the remains of 20 people along with funerary objects that were collected by Swedish researchers in 1891 from Mesa Verde. In some instances, Indigenous people have started to rethink the idea of reparial as their default position. They too are now aware of the potency of DNA evidence in determining ancestor-descendant relationships. Indigenous people began contributing to archaeology when the controversies of reburial, repatriation, and genomic science began intersecting. Today, Indigenous archaeology is maturing, and the changing stance builds on the nuances articulated in our perspective of our connection to our ancient homeland. Informing our discourse to researching our heritage is the acceptance of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, which was adopted by the General Assembly of the United Nations in 2007. Given that these trends matured and developed since the 1990s, we have entered an era of renewal and the moral compass of archaeology is orienting to a new ethical lodestar. It gives us an opportunity to revisit the statement of ethics guiding the membership of the Society for American Archaeology. We are in a position to update the ideals it contains and to take into account the changes that have occurred in the SAA and in archaeology more generally. Thank you.